Hello, hello everybody, and welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. My name is Jason Newland, and please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. See, you didn't realize I can speak Italian, I can. I'm fluent. So today is the 7th of July 2024. It's a Sunday. It's 10 minutes past 13 o'clock. Vinny is sitting on my foot. We just had a little, a little nap together. He, cuddled, he proper cuddled up to me. Like really uh, more than normal, which is quite nice. It's very nice. Really, yeah. Very nice. I didn't want to move. I really didn't want to move. I just wanted to stay there. And Yeah, we know what, we know what you mean when you say you didn't want to move. You haven't got to explain. I just wanted to stay there and not move. <laughs> It was just nice, just, I wouldn't say romantic, not romantic, but it was, it was loving, it was, I felt kind of liked for a minute, <laughs> yeah, so hello everybody, um, let me think. Okay, if you would like to support me, then please send me a PayPal gift if you choose. I'd be very grateful. Uh, the address is www.paypal.com forward slash forward slash PayPal me forward slash Jason Newland. The link is on my Jason Newland's Boring Group, actually in the main thingy, whatever it is. Not really explained this very well, have I? But anyway, I'll be, be very grateful. So I'm just trying to figure out, I don't know why I get like this, but I figure out what was next. What's next, baby? What's next? Vinny's hearing stuff. He's still chasing this fly. There's a fly that he's been following, trying to get to for about three days. He's chasing it around. And I'm pretty sure it gives him more pleasure than anything else. Ever. Honestly, he just, he loves chasing it. When he jumps in the air, does somersaults, all kinds of things. I mean, I'm pretty sure that if, if learning to cook would get him that fly, he would go to catering college. He's, he would, oh, he would learn to, he would, what? I don't know. They just asked me what I was talking about. I really don't know. Should we have a look at the news, laddies and gentlemen? Let's see what's in the news today, shall we? Let's have a look. See if I can find any nice stories. Right, let's have a look. Uh... Right, um, ba -dee, ba -dee, ba -dee. well, it was quite a nice story. We're not, it's not really gonna gonna be for everyone, and I'm not really a football fan as such, but I am aware that when the English football team plays, the results of 
the particular match in question can have an emotional effect on the country as a whole. There's a there's a certain mood change. So when they're doing well, there is a, there's a certain uplift as opposed to when, well, normal. You know, when perhaps they haven't done quite so good. So last night, or the last two matches, well, all the last two matches, the last night they won on penalties against Switzerland. What are Switzerland people called? So you got Germany, German, Italy, Italians, Spanish, or Spain, Spanish. So it's all kind of Switzerland, Switzerlandish. Chinese, China, Chinese, England, English. Mexican, Mexica, Mexica, Mexican. Uh, I just wonder what what Swit Switzerland. You nearly said Swiss, then didn't you? We know you're lying. No, I generally don't know. We heard you. You said Swiss. You know it's Swiss. No, I don't. <laughs> Why do you say things like that? You're just so silly. Ooh, do a lippers unmissable pop party. Country pop queen Shania Twain impresses worthy farm. Okay, don't really know what that's about. So yesterday the English football team it went to penalties because it was a zil is um a 1-1 one, one draw at the end of the game so that's they had penalties and England scored five goals in a row and uh, Switzerland scored three so I think it was England went first so they scored their first goal then Switzerland went second and I think they missed the goal England went went third and they scored a goal so it was 2-1 Switzerland won I think they might have missed one well they no, they, they took one and won and got that no they, they yeah so that was 2-1 then it was 3-1 3-2 4-2-3-4-5 anyway we got 5 and they got 3 but they didn't I think when we scored our 5th goal there was no point going on because they had they couldn't get 5 because they'd already lost they'd already missed 1 Yeah, because if we missed one, we'd have been four, and they'd have taken their next one, and if they'd scored that, it would have been four four, and they would have had to continue forever until someone, yeah. I, I, I don't know how long it is allowed to go on for, but what was strange is, well, not strange, but strange in my lifetime really to see is that every single person in the English team that took a penalty just took it and got it in and we are famous around the world I went for different things I guess Slavery being one of them, I suppose, at one point. But uh, we are quite well known, I think, in the football, in you know, World Cup, European Cup, for not doing so wonderful 
when it comes to penalties. So just as a, you know, as a, an observer, I guess, but I'd, I watched it, I didn't watch the whole match because I was busy, but I did watch the, like the last part of it, I watched bits and bobs, you know, I visited, I visited and then I just had a little, you know, then I came back, then I visited again and What's that? What is that? Chase? North London. What? Okay. Um, ba da ba 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 da ba da. No, I mean, even the nice stories aren't nice. That's weird. Like, come on, give me some positive stories. So let's have a look at boxing. Let's have a look at boxing. Um, well, I watched something. It was I enjoyed. Right, uh, Britain Fisher. So this is something I watched on TV. I watched. It was Johnny Fisher, the run for the bull. He was a heavyweight, and he was fighting Alec, Alan Babic, and he dismantled him in thirty-six seconds, which was, yeah, I mean. It was very impressive, very impressive. So I, yeah, I, um, I thought that was kind of how it was going to go. I didn't expect it to be quite as impressive as that. But in the same way, I'm not sure I expected him to have to throw that many punches either. To be honest, I thought he'd just punch him and he'd go down, which he nearly did with the very first punch. Um, Alan Babic nearly you could see he was oh shook and then I think he took four five punches and then he was gone and he got up and he was on spaghetti legs and um, so the referee stopped it like he should or she should I can't remember if it was because there was this you might say, "Well, what does it matter? It's a man or a woman? Why? Why? Why do you have to? Why have you noticed? What did you?" Happened to notice it was a woman. Hey, what's hey hey sexist sexist? Do you want to know why? Because the woman who was a referee in last night's fights, her surname was Pooh. That's why I remember Pooh. So tell me that you wouldn't remember that. Boxing referee, boxing referee, um, okay, let's have a look, see I can't find the name, it was, it's a Asian, um, she looked, well she had an accent as well, so she sounded like she was possibly, I don't know, not malaria. Um, what's that place? Like maybe Thailand, maybe Malaysia. Malaysia, that's it. Malaysia or um, the other place that's not far from there. But that kind of area. And tiny little thing. Just compared to the box, I mean. I mean, sometimes they do that. They put in these small referees and he's huge men or women men and they they couldn't separate the boxers if they wanted to and I think in some ways there's a kind of it's better because the but I think it makes the, I don't know I, I would get a little bit 
Hmm. Maybe it makes the boxes a bit more compliant, knowing that the person that's telling them what to do is miniature. I don't know. What do you reckon? Boxing referee reviews. Let's have a look. Who? Famous referees. Can't find it. Can't find the person, rubber. But she was, yeah, definitely something poo. P H U. So that was. Uh, <laughs> just gave me a little bit of a, a jolly giggle, really, because I am very childish. That's that's kind of it, really, isn't it? It's, there's no way of getting around it. So anyway, Johnny Fisher, won. Also watched the early hours in the morning. Watched as much of it as I can, but it was uh, Shakur Stevenson. He had a defended his world title, but that wasn't particularly exciting. Um, and I struggled to stay awake. I really did. I went to bed and I got up and I thought, oh, I watched the boxing. Really, really. Oh, well, let's have a look at the weather. Latest forecast for Uck. Today, this afternoon, many will see areas of cloud and scattered showers some heavy especially in central eastern england where they will be thundery drier in northwest scotland but with a few showers okay and tonight tonight showers will die out for most and clouds diminish leaving mainly clear skies for most Okay, like they're using the word moist, I mean most a lot. There will be, that there, there will just be some patches of cloud in southern Scotland and the south coast of England. And Monday, which is tomorrow, we'll see a sunny and dry start for most but patchy cloud and scattered showers develop in the north later on. Outbreaks of rain will also advance into southern areas late in the day. It's really weird I'm reading it, but I'm not taking any of it in. Zero, like zero. We've got no idea what I just said or read out loud. Outlook for Tuesday to Thursday. Tuesday will continue to see outbreaks of heavy and persistent rain move northwards, reaching Scotland by evening as it tapers to scattered showers in the south. On Wednesday, there will be spells of rain in northern Scotland with a mix of sunny spells and showers elsewhere. Thursday will be cloudy with some patchy rain in the north. What's patchy rain? Rain is rain. How can it be patchy? Like the whole, it's not a whole raindrop, it's just like parts missing. What? What? Thursday will be cloudy with some patchy rain in the north. Did I, did I read that? D brighter and drier in the south. Did I read that bit out? I can't remember. I remember talking, to, did I, I mention something about patchy? Um, let's have a look. Western US bakes in heat wave. So according to Alex Phillips, BBC News, four hours ago, a record breaking heat wave that has already 
caused large wildfires in western US states is set to continue next week. Around 130 M people were under some form of heat warning or advisory on Saturday. Nearly 57 M people, M people, do you remember? Right on time, you're going to ride on time. Um, nearly 557 M people remained under heat alerts as at least one, okay, Meteorologists are warning that warm nights will lead to people getting hot. Temperatures could reach what? Temperature could reach 128 Fahrenheit, which is 53 centigrade in Death Valley on Monday. Now, 53, a few things to mention, just to point out on that one. 53 degrees, so 30 degrees is, I mean, anything over 100 degrees Fahrenheit is just ridiculous, you know, but 30 degrees centigrade is already too hot. 53 degrees is inhumane. I mean, it's just not, it's not doable. I don't know. But then it says, what they've done is they've obviously picked the hottest part of the us, of that whole area, the whole uh, us area, in order to, to pick a point to make it dramatic. Because let's face it, you call an ambulance. Oh, uh, I'm gonna do my American accent now. Sorry, it's not offensive. I just like. Here we go. Hey, yippity doo! My name's Bob. Hi. Yes, Bob. What would you like? Why well, like an ambulance, please? Yippity doo da. <laughs> what am I saying? Yippity doo da. It's like, hey, hey, fella, hey, give me, send me an ambulance, won't you, please? Yeah. Um, I don't know. That was my. Okay, perhaps I should stop. But you know, like, well, well, sir, where are you at the moment? Where, where, where should we send the ambulance to? Because hmm. I know that's normally how they talk. And so, oh, uh, I'm just in Death Valley. Yes, uh, I'm in Death Valley. So it's a bit too hot. Fifty-three degrees centigrade, hundred twenty-eight degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, as if you will. Uh, yeah, I'm in Death Valley. So can you come and help me? No. What, what do you mean, no? You hey, you ho, ha. Well, why are you going, you hey, you ho, ha? Oh, yippity doo da. Yes, I'm just being pleasant. I don't, I don't know why. I don't know why. Well, I could, the point is, why are you in a place called Death Valley? It's called Death Valley, not D E A F. It's T H. There's a clue in the name. It's why do they have to put that stuff out? Like, right. yeah, guess what? It's almost like um, it, you know, it's always oh, really cold. It's really cold in Iceland, or it's really cold. But then they're pointing out it's like minus a thousand degrees in this particular mountain range, which is thousands of miles away from anywhere. Even polar bears don't go near it in case their willies fall off. You know, it's just... <sighs> okay. Let's have a look. Death, well, Death Valley National Park. There's a, there's a national park for lizards I'm guessing a hundred why would you be there there's actually a website for it 
Death Valley National Park CA is that I don't know what that stands for hottest driest and lowest national park in this below sea level basin steady drought and record summer heat make death valley a land of extremes yet each extreme has a striking contrast towering peaks are frosted with winter snow rare rainstorms bring vast fields of wild flowers lush oasis harbor tiny fish and a refuge for wildlife and humans despite its morbid name a great diversity of life thrives in death valley um people go there Explore campground options from primitive to full hookup. Wow. Um, it's got here alerts in effect at the top. Extreme summer heat. Expect high temperatures of 100 to 130 Fahrenheit. Minimize time outside. <laughs> Minimize your time outside in the heat. Do not hike after 10 a.m. Drink plenty of water. Travel prepared to survive. Well, it's kind of a good idea wherever you go, really, isn't it? Uh, I like to think that wherever I go, I'm kind of <laughs> prepared to survive, if possible. But it's like, if you travel, prepare to live. Just, yeah. Cell phones do not work in most of the park. And there's more. What else does it say? Oh, blimey. Beat the heat. Prevent heat-related illnesses. So, recreating, recreating in national parks this summer, question mark, don't let the heat ruin your trip. How? Okay. Heat-related illnesses can cause symptoms from heat rash to heat stroke. You may need at least a full day of rest to recover or a visit to the hospital. Blimey, this could ruin your whole trip and we don't want that to happen. Beat the heat by learning what a heat-related illness is, how to plan for the heat, how to pack for the heat, how to avoid heat-related illness during your activity, what to do when experiencing a heat-related... <sighs> Don't go. That's the prevention. Don't go. Why would you go somewhere that's... Well, first of all, called Death Valley. You can't go out after 10 in the morning. You have to wait in until 4 in the afternoon. I mean, some would argue... That's most of the day. Wear sun protection. Oh, thanks for that. Hadn't thought about that one. What do you mean? The hottest place, which obviously means there's more sun. Perhaps I should wear some. Okay. Drink plenty of water. Well, I'm glad you wrote that one down as well. Wow. If I hadn't checked the website, I'd have turned up with nothing. I just had a bag of sand to eat. Eat salty, eat salty snacks. What? Salty snacks replace the electrolytes your body loses when you sweat. This is especially important when you are recreating, recreating in the heat, which increases how much you sweat. Okay. Right, I understand that. You know, it can cause cramps and stuff like that if you if you're you get low on salts and stuff. However, Now, I've been in the heat a few times. I have. <laughs> Everyone has, pretty much, unless you you haven't. But, you know, I've never, never been 
on a really hot train in this summer waiting to get out waiting for the train to stop so I could get off get off my stop never thought to myself you know what I need right now is a bag of nuts nice salty peanuts that'll do the trick it's the last thing you want isn't it it's it's kind of a double thing. So you drink, the more water you drink, the more you flush out the salt. But the more salt you have, the more you need to drink. Our next is rest often and in the shade if available. You know, someone's in hospital. You know, I didn't read that bit. I did the rest often bit. I just didn't see the in the shade. Yeah, I did. I rested, but you know. If I'd not seen the in the shade part, I would, things would have been so much different. My feet wouldn't have melted. The next one, get wet. Wow. <laughs> get wet. So, okay, so you're walking past a stream and you're absolutely melting. But, you know, I didn't realise, if I if I knew that getting wet would cool me down, I'd have had a little dip. I'd have poured some water over my head from the stream. Soak a towel or a shirt in water to keep you cool if water is available. Well, yeah, I mean, if water isn't available, then it's probably not on the menu, is it? Soak a towel or a shirt in water to keep you cool. But if water is available, that's what that's what they're saying. Consider completely soaking yourself to keep cool. Okay, it's gone very scientific here. This is brilliant. See, I didn't know this. Are you ready? Ready for your minds to be blown? The water can cool off your body and lessen the effects of the heat wow oh man I can't believe that this is this is like going back to college I feel like I've learned something really useful so if I'm ever stuck in a really really hot place where there's well, first of all, if there's no water, then I won't try and cover my face and body in a towel. Um, well, I'll, for if, if there's no water around, I'll, I'll use a... I'll cover my face in a, a wet towel. Mind you, you sweat. That's wet, isn't it? But I've seen movies. You can... You can there's ways of making stuff wet, isn't there? And... But if water is available, you can use that water, the water, to cool your body off. Because water lessens the effects of heat. It actually helps you cool down. Blimey. But then what about the old thing about, you know, if you have a cup of tea, a nice hot cup of tea is much better than the cold water to cool you down in the heat absolute rubbish but it's like yeah it works yeah yeah it's true it's true my grandmother's 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 pet rabbit told me I don't know follow oh here's a one I'm guessing I kind of know what this might be follow no swimming and no wading signs uh, no, many parks have rivers or lakes that might look like an inviting place to cool down, but in reality are very dangerous. Many of these water bodies are very deceptive. The shoreline may have slippery rocks and there may be strong currents and cold water temperatures that could lead, really? 
Cold water temperatures. What kind of water is that that can completely repel the heat? Follow park rules and regulations on swimming or wading. I'm wondering crocodiles, alligators, stuff like that. You know, but maybe they don't. They're, they're, they're not mentioned that. So that's a bit of a. It's a little bit of a tease, isn't it? Really. First of all, they're saying, you know, if you can, put water on yourself, and if you can, cover yourself in water. Right, that's what it says, isn't it? Get wet. So it's actually it's actually saying, um, if water is available, consider and completely soaking yourself to keep fo- keep cool. And then it's saying, no swimming and don't go near the water. So these might look like nice places to cool down, but keep away from them. So what are you supposed to do? Like look for a puddle. Hope you come across an elephant that's got a trunk full of water ready for you, just like in a movie. Or is about to wash itself and you can just jump in in the middle and roll around in the mud with its family. Put your backside plan into action. Or put your backup plan into action. Use the backup plan if you get to the park and it's too hot to do your planned activity. This way you can enjoy your visit while avoiding heart related illness, heat related illness. So, that's just someone getting rescued and they got spied by a helicopter or something and the person in of the helicopter the paramedics say why why didn't you why didn't you call us what did you not have a backup plan and the man's saying yeah what was your backup plan well just to do nothing i put <laughs> that was what that was my backup plan well it's not much of a backup plan is it you're not much of a backup plan i thought we just saved your life how do you know how do you know I was alive when you got there. Hmm? How do you know that I'm super heaty? Whatever that means. Oh, I like the heat, I guess. Turn back. Oh. So this is something. And I'm glad it put this here because I wouldn't have thought this. That's very important. I wouldn't have even thought about it. If it gets too hot during your activity, and I can't, honestly, this didn't even enter my mind. I mean, I'd, I'd have to write this down if I went there. If it gets too hot outside, stop and turn around. Turn back, go back. It's like, wow. Why didn't I think of that? Mind you, I can just remember when I was a kid. My dad had probably, nope. My dad would be like, yeah, we're going. No, but we can't. It's too hot. No, we're going. We decide, I've decided we're going to that mountain peak, and that's where we're going. I see, my dad, he drove during a not an avalanche what is it snowstorm what do they call it but like really really big snowstorm because he was determined I'm going there once he's made his mind up I'm going there we, we went to the Isle of Man 20 years ago and got a phone call we were only like 20 minutes away from home got a phone call saying that the the ferry have been called off, cancelled due to the high winds and there might not be any more ferries, we don't know. We were on our way to Liverpool. So so should we turn back? Nope. <laughs> we're going to live we're going to Liverpool. It's like So Liverpool's about four hundred miles away. 
or 300, 400 miles away, and we're literally just 20 minutes away. F- nope, we're going. He was like, that's it. Determined. It's like, made a decision, that's it. So I wouldn't want to go into Death Valley with him. What's this? Oh, after all this, there's an important notice. Important. Always check your car for your children and pets, especially the back seat, before you lock your doors and walk away. Right, let me see if I've got this right. So you get out of your car and you start your hiking into the mountains and the valleys. They're basically saying, please check that you've haven't take that you haven't left your kids and your pets in the car. Ooh. It, it, if you drove into the desert with the intention of walking in over a hundred degrees heat. And you were able to just forget that your kids, your family members, your pet was in the car. How are you allowed to drive? How are you allowed to even walk around without a helmet on? I mean, it's got to be... I know some people do leave cars, cars... Leave cars in their dogs. Leave ca- dogs in the car and that. Um, I like to think that anyone that does that is like literally is like a quick in and out. But you know who knows? Because go sometimes it can get distracting, can't it? You know you go into a supermarket. You're only going to be in there for like 30 seconds. Just go go in and get a scratch card. That's it. Then there's a big queue. You think, oh, it's a big queue. But my my baby's in the car. I've got to get back. Oh, she'll be all right for a couple more seconds. Oh, there's there's a big queue. Maybe... I'll go and get some milk and by the time the milk's done by the time I got that the queue will go down and I'll pay for the milk at the cigarette counter where I buy the scratch cards rather than at the the till section so it's actually going to save me time and then on the way to the milk section you you see some adverts pasta like you know a big it's this super sized bag of pasta that's like 9.99 but it's a big I mean you feel like if I had that pasta that could probably last me for a good three weeks you know just a little bit of tomato sauce maybe some cheese to sprinkle on top that'd last me for ages I have to cook it. That's a downside. But pasta's fairly easy to cook. Uh, So, eh. and then you start thinking, well, do I really want to eat pasta? Wouldn't it be much nicer to, I mean, pasta's okay, but it's much nicer as a, a side dish to a big pizza. And you start thinking about food and eating and realise that you could actually go for some food. And you remember that they actually do sell pizzas, not just frozen ones, but they sell, there's a whole, there's a pizza section where they'll, they'll actually make you a pizza. 
there's ready-made ones that are fresh and you take them home and you cook them yourself but they if if you ask for a specific one they'll do that within reason um I mean, you can't just turn up with stuff. I'd like this on my pizza, please. You know, just hand them random objects. That that doesn't work. Most of bananas, bananas don't work on pizzas. What if I put it back in the skin? Which is a really weird thing to say out loud. So... And then I'm thinking, you think like, okay, I get a pizza, and then maybe I'll do that for later. Right now, I could go with some food. And you go upstairs, there's a restaurant, so get some food there. And there's a paper on one of the empty tables, so grab the paper and have a good old read. And then you get a phone call and have a big long phone conversation. and. Well, by the time you get out of the supermarket, there's a, a police force <laughs> surrounding your car. So yeah, there's, I can see how some people couldn't get into that, like, I'm only going to be a couple of seconds and then get distracted. Maybe get caught stealing, shoplifting or whatever, you know? Normally shoplifting is a really quick thing. I'll just pop in, you know, Nick, Nick, Nick something quickly and then just be out. That's how some people think. I, I don't personally do that, but I know people, I know lots of people over the years that that's, that's what they mean by shopping. In fact, I was in, I was in this shop once with this person and the cashier started shouting at her. So she was in, I, I went in, I think I got some Cokes and she went in to get a, I don't know what it was, something cider or whatever, can of cider or can of whatever. And the lady, the cashier, shouted at her, you know you're not allowed in here. You know you've been barred, you've been banned. Me, me, me. I was a little bit embarrassed, to be honest. Um, it wasn't so much that, it's just I forgot my trousers. And she, and she said, but I'm only looking. She said, yeah, be, be. She said, but I'm not, I won't steal anything. I'm not doing it. She said, get, okay, I'll get out. I'll get out. I felt really bad for this, this woman that I was with. Like, she's a neighbour and like, it was a bit of an awkward position to be in. It's, it's kind of like, I'm trying to think of a situation. Do you know, being in a job interview and the interviewer lets off a massive fart, it's that kind of situation, it's just awkward. Funny, but awkward. And the problem with that is if if someone is interviewing you, does something incredibly embarrassing for themselves, for example, letting off a huge fart, chances are you're not going to get the job, no matter what or how well it was went up to that point, because they kind of know or will guess or imagine that you will be mentioning that big massive fart to all your work colleagues when you start working there you know your new new work colleagues and that's why when I ever because I did sit in a, a, a job interview once just as like a I don't know why I was even there to be honest I, was, I thought it was disciplinary <laughs> I did because I used to quite often people used to have disciplinaries and they'd, they'd take me in with them a couple of people and that's that I got modelled up with this because it was a job interview but it wasn't and what as a team leader wanted someone with him 
so I went in with him to do the job interview. I just sat there. I didn't do anything. I kept forgetting that it was a job interview and not a disciplinary. I was like, well, when are you going to sack him? When are you going to sack him? Why are you asking him all these questions? Because you know the, the questions people get when they're having a job interview. like Things that I never used to be. So when I was a kid, you just did lie. When I was younger, you just, especially when I was young, like, I got no experience, but I'll turn up. <laughs> That's the most I can offer. Okay. I mean, I used to end, if there was ever any questions when I had a job interview, when I was in my teens, late teens, my question would always be, uh, when do I start? And that would be it. And sometimes they'd laugh, sometimes they wouldn't. Sometimes they'd phone up later and offer me the job and sometimes they wouldn't. But it was quite easy to get jobs back then. Because I was young. I was, it was easy because I, I was going for jobs that didn't need any experience or any qualifications or any kind of skill set. It was all really basic, you know, catering as in kitchen portering you know washing up or cleaning toilets or serving food or stocking shelves in a supermarket or working in a factory putting things into boxes uh, cleaning caravans I did work in a old people's, or as they're called residential homes now. They used to be, we used to call them old people's homes. And I got a job as a cook. <laughs> I did, got a job as a cook. And the person training me up, because I'd had two years experience of catering, had been to catering college, did catering at school, so... I kind of knew my way around kind of a kitchen. I had a catering job part-time when I was a kid. So, you know, kind of knew my way around. I think I was like the assistant cook. I wasn't like the cook cook, but I was there and I was going to be looking after the place when she wasn't there. And I'm not, I can't remember exactly, but anyway, I worked in this old uh, residential home. This older residential home. It had been there a while. Uh, I think the... Someone that actually grew up there. They, there was, they grew up because their family ran it. She was now 90. And... They gave me such a hard time over porridge. Now preparing vegetables is pretty easy. You just got to do a lot of them. So that's what I was doing. I was basically just preparing vegetables and getting everything ready for dinner and the lady, she would do the actual cooking, cooking. But um, I would help with the prep. And I think I was there for a week and I got sacked. I might have been there two weeks, but, y you know, the, the the porridge situation was very difficult and it was that's why I can't really I can't watch the the you know the Free Bears Goldilocks movies or whatever Disney stuff because it just reminds me there was no bears but it was everyone complained but it wasn't the same complaint that was a weird noise, wasn't it? <laughs> I genuinely didn't know that that many different people could have so many different tastes or preferences when it came to porridge. If anyone doesn't know what porridge is, it's just it's like goo. No, I, li I like porridge. I'm a, I'm a fan. 
but it is just stodgy goo um oats basically boiled oats with either boiled I think in milk water I don't know whatever but it's and uh, sometimes people have salt or sugar you know it's, it can be done in different ways but I was having to do this huge massive pan of porridge and it was never right not for anyone but it wasn't like yeah we've got a complaint it's too stodgy no it was you know sometimes it was too stodgy sometimes it was too runny sometimes it didn't taste very nice it was too salty it was too sweet the texture was wrong um there was too many maggots in it i don't know whatever it didn't put this amount of and that was in one day that was just one day i was getting all these complaints and i was trying to change it from being too stodgy and now it's too now it's too runny now it's too green why is it green i mean there's all these moans people moaning should it really be moving <laughs> why is it talking to us why is it an eyeball you know a lot of complaints 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 and i went in there i went into the the place where they were eating and i said look what do you want what do you actually want i want to make porridge right i want to make the right one for you i want to make it so you're happy i want everyone to be happy that's all i want in life i really need you all to be really happy that's what i i dream about making the perfect porridge is my life's ambition so please tell me what you need and they all shouted different things at me I want it runny I want it me some bloke shouted I need a nurse I need an ambulance it's just like yeah let's just stick on the important things first we've got a little porridge okay it's just like, I can't it can't be all those things it can't be nice and runny and nice and thick it can't be stodgy and not stodgy. It can't be sweet and salty. And I don't really want to address the green thing. It's, that's a separate issue. Um, all I'm going to say is, you know, in the, the pond, in the garden, do you remember Kermit? You all liked cut the frog that was in there. You called him Kermit that lived in that pond. He's moved on. Um, someone left the door open. You know, wasn't my fault. So that upset a few people, but it's like, come on. It tasted nice though, didn't he? They said no. It's really bad. Like, I didn't really, really, I didn't really class myself as being a particularly good cook. But I thought I was all right, you know. I thought I was... It's just not terrible. What made it worse, though, this made it worse, is firstly, the woman who is my boss, my direct boss. There's only two of us in the kitchen. She took a immediate dislike to me. Right. And then, lo and behold, uh, this bloke came in I heard the I had the vroom vroom of his of his little motorbike came in someone that I really didn't like he was probably in his 
early 20s, maybe 24, 25-ish age. I was, what, 17. And... Or was I 18? I can't remember. I might have been 18 at that point. He came in as giving all the big and being all cocky and arrogant and uh, oh this is my mum this is this is she's like my my second mum really making a big deal about mums okay which is winding me up because the last time I saw that person let's call him per a person uh, okay I'll go back a little further he was friends with my stepmom before she took off before she left and I think they worked together in an office so and I know that he kind of saw her a little bit when, when, when she split up because I didn't catch them together but I saw them I didn't see them but I know that they were he was, he was sniffing around and everything and And then I think about a year after that, she moved and a year later or a few months later, he came up to me in a nightclub and whispered in my ear what he'd done to my mum, if you know what I mean. I, your mum, that, that's what he said. And he found that hilarious. Uh, I guess he was just lucky that I was so young when he said it because it would have, you know, it's, I don't know. It was, it was not good, but I didn't like him, but it, yeah, that's kind of another understatement and he was coming in every day. Really, I don't know. He might not have even known that he'd said it. He might have forgotten he, perhaps he was drunk and perhaps in his mind he, I was like a friend because, you know, he, he met me when I was a kid. I was still at school when he met me. And he was always friendly to me and everything. But, uh, yeah, yeah, it wasn't, it was, it, yeah, could have gone a different way. But he, I got sacked anyway, because I was a little bit rude back then, and I said to her, like the woman I was working with, just like, I, I, used, I used to talk back to people. I was verbally, a bit naughty, verbally, sometimes, when I was a teenager. Like, if, if someone would have a go at me, I'd just go back at them. I did that at school, I did that when I was a tiny, I did that when I was a little kid, you know, depending on my mood, of course, sometimes I wouldn't, sometimes I'd be very submissive and very, like, just take it on the chin, you know, but other times I really wouldn't, so it's all, all, all dependent upon my mood, always has been. But I, I quite like the idea of working there because working in an old people's home or a residential home, bearing in mind that my favourite person was my nan. And I always I always liked old 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 people. I always got on with old people my whole life. Um pensioners and stuff like that. Not all of them, but I I just quite liked them because they all seemed quite friendly and my nan, you know, it was always nice to me. My granddad, he said like five words to me my whole life, but I still, I still like liked him I or cared about him, I suppose. But he just wasn't a conversationalist with me. We The only time we spoke was three times actually. Once was when... Bruno was fighting Mike Tyson, so this is what, 1989, and we had a conversation about um, Tyson, 
you know, Bruno fighting and I think Bruno knocked Tyson out and whatever. Which he didn't. And then the... If you can hear all that noise in the garden, hopefully not. And then there was another time we were talking about politics. I can't remember how that went, but I think I was shut down quite quickly. I said something that was not correct. <laughs> and then the third time was actually quite nice, but um, I think it's when I got my flat above the chip shop. My granddad took me into the shed and he gave me a bonsai tree which I didn't really, perhaps didn't see, I didn't realise at the time how um, how relevant that was actually. When you think about it, he, he was like a, to me he was very much like an old Jedi master kind of, he was, there was something quite, quite special about him he's very quiet but very tough but kind of got respect but I, I knew I knew he'd been through a huge amount but he, I knew he was also he was a boxing champion in the army and I've seen his medals and his trophies and stuff my nan kept them and so he always knew even though he wasn't a big bloke he was he was wasn't particularly it was probably sh my height maybe shorter um, but he gave me this bonsai tree and I didn't connect the dots because not only was he kind of like a master he could have taught me boxing if I'd asked him he perhaps he would have done I could have asked him to teach me to box I never did because I didn't have that connection with him but he gave me a bonsai tree a little bonsai tree What happens in the Karate Kid? What does the, the, the Mr. Miyagi? He grows bonsai trees, doesn't he? So my, I didn't even know my granddad grew bonsai trees in his in his shed, and he gave it to me. I was like, I didn't even. I mean, I don't know if my granddad ever had ever seen the Karate Kid. I don't know, because. It was only a couple of years, really, before that. You know, I think Karate Kid was about, what, eight, 84? Karate, Karate Kid. When was it? Was it 83 or 84? 1984. So, I started doing karate either before or after that, I don't know. It was around that time. But it wasn't really influenced by the Karate Kid. It it might have been though. I'm pretty sure it came out after I'd started doing karate. I might be wrong though. God, they're so noisy out there. I hope you can't hear them. But my granddad gave me a bonsai tree. So he was like Mr. Miyagi. Um, which wouldn't be a good thing to say because he wasn't... He wasn't perhaps the biggest fan of the Japanese... <laughs> Um, because of the war and stuff, he. But that you know, it's just a, it was a generational thing, because he'd he'd been at war with Japan and uh, just him, no one else, just him. He took on the whole country, and he, I think, yeah. Anyway, so he gave me a bonsai tree. I had my own Mister Miyagi was my granddad. I didn't see it. I mean, how many kids get a bonsai tree? Someone that's into karate, some which I was, someone that was obsessed with martial arts, which I was, and they get a bonsai tree from their granddad. It's like, didn't I didn't connect the dit dots in order to like, because if I had, perhaps I would have um, kept with the martial arts when I was young. But yeah, so that's it really. I'm going to go because uh, I just closed the window and he started barking. They're making too much noise out there. Um, that's one of the things is difficult sometimes to make a podcast during the day. Thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love. Bye.